1919, in southeast Minnesota, Bernard Pietenpol experimented with constructing a series of biplanes by working with materials purchased from lumberyards and hardware stores, including unbleached muslin, which he used to cover the fuselage and control surfaces. Since he couldn't afford to buy an aircraft engine for his first biplane, a shaky, hardly airworthy contraption, he decided to power the aircraft with an engine from a Model T Ford automobile. In May 1929, Pete and Paul had completed a second version of his high-wing monoplane, adding a second cockpit. This time, he powered the aircraft with a Model A Ford 40 horsepower engine. Pete and Paul replaced the previous engine's heavy battery, distributor and generator with a magneto and the exhaust manifold with a short, straight stack. He mounted the engine backwards, attaching the prop to the forward-facing flywheel and the radiator at the rear where it stuck up prominently ahead of the front of the cockpit. When the aviation editor of Modern Mechanics and Inventions wrote in 1929 that it was not likely that an automobile engine would be able to be adapted for flight, Pete and Paul and a friend, Don Fink, flew the two of the machines up to Minneapolis on April the 14th, 1930 and proved him wrong. The editor, Westy Farmer, was won over and the magazine printed drawings and photographs that publicised the new aeroplane. The magazine dubbed the aircraft the Air Camper and the name stuck. Modern Mechanics published a set of Air Camper plans in 1932 in its annual Flying and Glider Manual. An 18-year-old friend of Pete and Paul, Orin Hooperman, drafted a second set of plans for the Air Camper in 1934. Pete and Paul began selling them, along with instructions on how to convert the Model A engine. He sold these for $7.50 a set. Today, builders can order the very same plans for $100 from Peter Paul's son, Don. I fly it, but it, I don't own it. Oh. Did you fly it in? I did, yeah. Where's it from? What is it's, it? Uh, it's a Pete and Paul. Um, so it's a home built. Designs from 1929. Um, I flew it in from a little strip about 15 miles east of Peterborough. So it's about oh. an hour. Grass field 50 miles east of Oh, are you? So we're not like in the CFS. It's just a, a farm. But um, I mean, no, it's a wonderful little... Yeah, what's it like to fly compared to say a Cessna 150? Um, I mean well the tailwheel aspect is obviously there but yeah. once you're in the air I wouldn't say it's all that different. Okay it's so beautiful. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's real basic. What's the extra wire for that? That's my fuel. Oh wait this wire here? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say that's to charge my battery. I, I don't actually know. We're just gonna, tuck, we're gonna tuck that inside. <laughs> It's not an iPhone charger then. No, I wish it was actually, but no, it's, it's actually got um, experimental electronic ignition. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, so like You're the, running a well-known engine at least. That's yeah. A lot of people run the Continentals for that. Hey, James? I know, I mean, it's, it's been reliable other than we've had a bit of an issue with the oil pressure with the relief valve getting stuck open due to some debris from like bead blasting it. But as oh as, right. Yeah. As long as the oil pressure valve. Yeah, that's important. That, that stuff will get everywhere, won't it? Well, we nothing. Yeah, well, it, it, that's exactly it. They thought they'd cleaned it all out, and then I, I guess they hadn't. Yeah. Yeah. We need to start the alternator, Peter. I do. Yeah. yeah. So we've got one student there. He's actually a friend of 